here we go. So we're going to explore together reaching zero dose children in urban settings. And again, uh, we start with a very simple prompt, share a success story, a lesson learned or a challenge. Now as framing for this, 42% um, of members of the IA2030 movement work with the urban poor. That's almost half. Uh, so we know that um, uh, in a way we were confused because some of the experiences that you shared did not explicitly reference the urban context, but then we realized it's because that is your daily reality. So you're not going to point out what you live with every day. What we're interested is in uh, having you tell us about a specific situation and what you did in response to it. We're joined now uh, by three guides on the side from UNICEF. You've already met, if you've been in plenary with us, uh, you've already met Deepa Pokerel, uh, who leads the uh, demand team at UNICEF HQ, uh, Charles Kakaire, a demand specialist, and Ibrahim Dadari, who's the focal point for Zero Dose in urban settings. They're going to be introducing themselves when they give their first feedback. As always, we're going to kick off by asking you uh, to share your experience. And we're going to do that. Let me see. We should be able to find. Uh, so please raise your hand. We've lowered all the hands and we're interested specifically in the experiences that uh, that you have shared ahead of teach to reach If you are amongst our, um, let me see, uh, amongst our um uh, uh, guests of honor uh, who've been invited to the Zoom studio. We've invited you uh, specifically for that reason. So I see Hamida Mohamed Yaldou uh, will be our first speaker. Uh, Hamida, I hope you that you are ready to speak. Um, and let's see. All right. I'm going to start by sharing uh, Hamida's uh, story, and that is mothers that couldn't immunize according to the schedule are are being educated depending on what causes them not to follow their immunization schedules. So you're a nurse working for the Ministry of Health in Nigeria in the health facility. Uh, Hamida, would love to hear from you, asking you to unmute. And it's okay. It's always, it can be confusing. If you're on your phone, you'll need to swipe with your finger to find the button uh, through which you can unmute. All right. Looks like if you'd like to share on this topic... Okay, I had missed that there are around 10 uh, raised hands. Uh, let's see. Let's go to, and again, we're looking specifically for contributions on zero dose in urban context. So if you work in a remote rural area, it is likely to be very interesting, but that is not the specific topic that we are dealing with uh, today. So let's go to Obatavwe, Ukoba. Uh, Obatavwe, are you able to unmute? You have your hand raised. Oh, sorry. I think I accidentally muted you again. Please uh, unmute again. Uh, and this is part and parcel of <laughs> learning, uh, defying distance to uh, learn together. Oba, Oba Tavwe, uh, a warm welcome to you. Good afternoon, everyone. Actually, I'm Dr. Felicity. I had to use my friend's system because I had an issue connecting with mine. All right, no problem. Do introduce yes, yourself Felic then, Felicity. Dr. Felicity Odo. Yes. I shared an experience, actually. I work with the teaching hospital, Delta State University Teaching Hospital, Ogara, located in Delta State, Nigeria. And in our infant and child welfare clinic, we're faced with um, the challenge of the mothers holding on to some traditional practices with regards to immunization. They believe immunization is harmful, hence they can't immunize their children. Some of them believe when they immunize their children, they are prone to a lot of illnesses and diseases, considering how remote the area is. However, it led to a lot of nutritional deficiencies that most of these children tend to come down with malnutrition, the data we have with us in the clinic, running through uh, May to August, we had a total number of 10 malnourished children, even though they are currently on plumpy notes and they are being managed. And this challenge really drew our concern. So what we had to do was, we had to kind of create more awareness, health education, and then we had to go down to these communities because most of all these community members, they are more of traders and farmers. So they are not aware, they are not exposed. 
So we have to um, have a kind of community awareness. And with that, it has really helped us go a long way. And we oh, have more children being immunized. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Felicity. Uh, can you clarify for us, is this in an urban setting? What, 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 where is this? Can you tell us more about where, where this is happening? Yes, Ogara, Ogara, in Delta States. Okay, of course, that is my, my yes. ignorance of Nigerian in Nigeria. <laughs> ge- geography. Yes, in Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Right, so, okay, so, so um, can you tell us, what did you learn from this experience? Yeah, what I learned from this experience is most people are not informed. And, you know, when you are not informed, you are deformed. And it created an avenue for me to always give out information at any point in time, irrespective of where I find myself. Most of all these mothers are not educated. So I had to go a long way to reach out to most of the community leaders that speak in their dialects to help me communicate with them, thereby creating a very good awareness to enhance our immunization mm-hmm. and community participation. So Felicity, so, that is the learning. Uh, my next question for you is, uh, how many previously unvaccinated children did you vaccinate through the uh, experience, the effort that you just described? I think about 10 of them. Okay. About 10 of them, yes. Yep. The first one we vaccinated, in fact, we, he came in, the, the mother, the issue the mother had was that the first child, she, she after, after the VC, um, BCG, she claimed in quotes that the baby became very sick, became jaundiced, in fact, had distended abdomen. And for that reason, she refused vaccinating other or immunizing other children. So we had to pick up that one when the baby was already a year. And we now started vaccination. So that's the first baby we had. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Felicity. All right, let's go to uh, our next uh, speaker from in our Zoom uh, studio. Uh, so we will go to, uh, let's see, uh, Nietzsche Etienne Kemo. Now, uh, Nietzsche, I know you were you wanted to speak about uh, measles response uh, here. We hope you've also contributed on the topic of zero dose. Uh, could you introduce yourself and confirm that you are indeed ready to speak to share a success story, a lesson learned or challenge around reaching zero dose children in urban settings? Again, it's not about sharing your opinion or your general considerations, but really something you actually did and carried out. Yeah, good afternoon in the studio. Yes, Can you we, hear me? Yes, we hear you loud and clear. Do introduce yourself and confirm that uh, you're ready to share a zero dose experience. Yes, my name is Chi Etienne Kimo. I'm a public health uh, specialist. I'm, I'm chatting from Bamenda, Cameroon. I'm very ready to share my zero dose information. The most so please tell us uh, about a specific situation uh, in which you were confronted with this, with having to reach zero-dose children in an urban setting and tell us what you did in response to that situation. First, uh, let us know what was the situation that you were confronted with. Yeah, for a start, I'm not uh, actually in the vaccination uh, train, but since I'm a community health worker, yep. from, from time to time, I always... Uh, volunteer to work with the vaccination train. So I've come across uh, many cases where uh, zero, zero those students are, are, miss out on the vaccination train, the vaccination campaign. Can you tell us about uh, one of those situations, one of those cases? When did it happen, where, and what did you do? That's what we're very specific uh, story that we're interested in rather than generalities. Yes, it happened just uh, last August. Okay. It happened last August uh, in Bamenda, Cameroon, when I volunteered to work with uh, during the, uh, the measles vaccination campaign. Yes, I get to understand that uh, many, fami- many mothers were not turning out for the vaccination campaign. So I had to find out from, from my community why w- w- the reason why they, they are not turning out 
So I learned from most of the mothers that they were not aware of the vaccination campaign. So that's why they were unable to turn out. So most of them, they, they, they instead went back to the farm. So I had to create the awareness. I have to get to the to the to the to the director of the health of our health center. So I spoke with her and tried to make her know that they were supposed to go into the community to educate the mothers about the up, upcoming event of the campaign. So that's that, that that's what I did. Okay, th thank you. Um, uh, all right, so we'd like to understand better, but in order to do that, uh, for both uh, Felicity and, and Shia Tian Kemo, I'm going to now turn to our guides on the side. Um, I've seen, yes, so let's, I suggest we start with um, Ibrahim Dadari, who's joining us as a guide on the side for the first time. A warm welcome to you. Uh, do you have follow-up questions, um, things you would need to know in order to understand the, the situation described by uh, Felicity uh, from Nigeria or or Etienne from Cameroon. What else would you like to know before we get into your advice and guidance in response to the situations they've described? Uh, thank you, um, Rida. Thank you, colleagues. Um, good morning, afternoon. Here, Dr. Ibrahim Dadari here, immunization specialist with UNICEF and Focal Point for Urban. Um, very interesting um, experiences shared by Felicity and she, uh, from Bamenda. Um, so one of the things we we know is that um, some of the examples they share, in, like Delta, uh, Delta diversity example, as she said, is in the urban settings. Um, what specifically um, did uh, did they do, uh, particularly to reach out to children who didn't show up at the facility? Uh, because we know the issues, some of the issues faced by urban include an underestimation of the target population, uh, a lot of mobile population. A uh, lot of migration inwards. Um, so usually, what you see at the facility um, or at the clinic uh, is just a tip of the iceberg. So you need to reach out more broadly, expand your micro plan to be able to catch children who originally probably were not there last year, but this year they've moved from either as part of displacement or deliberate migration to the urban center. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So let's go now to uh, Felicity, who I believe is using the uh, 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 an account. Perhaps uh, uh, Felicity, you had trouble. Um, so I'm asking Obatwe Ukoba to unmute in order to answer that question. But we know that's Felicity. And then let's go to Etienne. Uh, can you tell us more uh, in response to Ibrahim uh, Dadari's question? What exactly did you do to reach out uh, to uh, children? Uh, so this was in the context of a campaign. You see, you see, caregivers are not coming. What do you then do um, in that uh, in that campaign to follow up uh, to figure out how many children there are, where they are, what the reasons for why they're not yet vaccinated? Can you tell us, give us more of the specifics of what you actually did uh, in in response to this situation? Yes, as a community health worker. I've been working in the community for a very long time, so I have that trust. My community members, they have trust in me. So I had earlier created a, a WhatsApp group where I send information concerning vaccination. If there is an upcoming vaccination, I send out the information to them. I let them know the time and where they can go for the vaccination campaign. So, so from time to time, I always go from door to door to, to, to contact because yeah, yeah, in my community in Kwenye, in Bamenda, we have a community mobilizers. We, we, the community mobilizer job is to go from door to door to inform, maybe one day to the vaccination campaign, they go from door to door to inform the mothers about the vaccination. So what I do as a community health worker, I go to the community, I meet the community mobilizers. Me, we, we both go to the communities. We educate the mothers about the importance of the vaccine. Educate the, the, the mothers about the time. They should not miss out. Uh, they, 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 they should not miss out on the vaccination. They should make sure to, 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 to bring 
their children for vaccination. Mm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Etienne. Now we have uh, Udoji Danjuma Makoshi who has a hand raised. So I don't know if that is to, to uh, share an experience or if Udoji has uh, follow up questions or comments in response to the two experiences shared sh so far. Udoji, could you introduce yourself and tell us if you want to share uh, your own success story, lesson learned, or challenge with respect to reaching zero dose children in urban settings, or if you'd like to make a comment? Yes, uh, Dr. Reda, thank you very much. And the diary, thank you for that uh, input. I stand as Danjuma Guji Makoshi from uh, Zamfara State, Nigeria. Actually, I would like to give my success story concerning how we're able to reach zero dose children in urban setting in Kusau and some of the um, major um, local governments in, in, in Zamfara State. One of the challenges that we have is uh, the attitude of health workers, as well as the security challenges that we are having, that we are not able to reach uh, zero dose in which, um, based on the surveys that we have, uh, Zamfara State stand one of the states that have high number of uh, zero dose children. So we make different strategies, but from the last identification that we have, that was on on um, that was an, around May, the other intensification, we are able to develop strategies that we are able to track and also uh, reach out to the zero dose. One of it is that we had a very robust planning where we developed a template where we air mark where are those zero doses can be found in urban setting by having DEX, DEX review of our RI data. We look through the previous previous uh, uh, data that we have. And by that, we are able to have settlements and places that have low, 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 high number of zero dose. So after we are able to fish out the settlements, we also develop an ODK, ODK uh, form that is using the uh, geospatial analysis where the each supervisor, each team that have, um, uh, they go out for vaccination, the supervisor will record the children immunized. We, then we have the just position of that team, where they have worked and when they start and when they end their work. And by doing that, we're able to mark from day one to day three, we know specifically where teams work and where teams we are not able to reach. And we're able to bring statements that we are not reach. And we are able to send additional teams to go out and ensure that those settlements were reach so that we can reduce the zero dose in that uh, zero dose children in those settlements. And by doing that, we are able to achieve where we have high number of children with uh, IV2, high number of children with with containing vaccine too, and the coverage was so high that even the National Primary Health Care uh, Development Agency acknowledged Zamfara State for the uh, reduction of zero dose in the state. I mean that I think is one of the lessons that I, I, I uh, we learned that using geospatial um, approach to our strategy, it yielded a better impact to our campaign. Mm -hmm. and over. Thank you, uh, Udoji. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you measured and what the results uh, were in terms of the number of zero-dose children that you were able to identify and reach and actually vaccinate? Yes, uh, actually, the data is not in my front here, but I, I think in my next uh, listen, I would like to share it with you, but we have a drastic reduction in zero-dose and high coverage of uh, RI indicators. All right, thank you. Compete. Thank you, Doji. All right, um, let's uh, go now to uh, a second guide on the side, uh, Charles Kakere. Uh, Charles, a warm welcome to you. Uh, this is not your first uh, time as a guide on the side. Uh, you've heard uh, an additional story. Uh, how would you like to, uh, yes, would you like to share a comment, feedback for, uh, for, for uh, about these experiences, or do you have follow-up questions? Uh, I'm asking you to unmute. Yes. Uh, uh. 
Uh, thank, thanks, Reda. Good, good afternoon, good evening, colleagues. Uh, it might not be um, particularly um, responding to what the previous contributor uh, shared, but just to be able to, um, you know, reflect on some of the challenges, you know, from from a, a communication or a demand side uh, that come with urban. You know, the fact that, um, you know, urban is very cosmopolitan, you know, these people come from different, you know, different places, speaking different languages, different culture, you know, all that has a lot of influence in terms of how we develop a message, in terms of how we engage, but also in terms of, um, you know, the different feedback mechanisms that we have. So in whatever we do, uh, when trying to mobilize these communities for, for, for immunization, I think it's important that we, you know, pay a, a bit more attention to the nuances that come with, um, you know, with, with, with the different groups that we, we, we have, um, within an urban context. That, that also directly links to, to a number of other things. Um, you know, the, the, the media consumption, you know, that, that comes with, um, uh, people within the urban settings, the the influencers. We 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 know that um, you know it. You know within urban settings, there tends to be um, you know those influencers who might not be our usual you know usual suspects that that we normally think about. So how do we harness those um, you know that that are influencers within the given locality to ensure that um, you know we work with them as allies to you know to help. Um, um, you know, to 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 help in you know raise the 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 demand for 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 immunization. Also linked to that is um you know misinformation, which is which we also see quite more within urban settings. How do we you know how do we handle that? Um, you know, just ensuring that um, we are able to provide the right information amidst the different information sources that people have. We know that um, you know the concept of sort of citizen journalism, if you like to use that term, within an urban context, you know, is is very high with everybody else acting like an expert, um, you know, in the piece of information that they provide. So how do we, you know, I think it's important that when we are looking at urban context, it's really important for us to be able to look at the different nuances and context which come with an urban setting to be able to see how best we can work together to encourage um, immunization within those settings. Um, thanks. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Charles. All right, I have uh, lowered uh, all the hands in our Zoom studio. Uh, please put it up again if you really have a specific success story, lesson learned, or challenge that you would like to uh, uh, to share, especially if you are amongst our guests of honor. Uh, so let's go to Pam uh, Dauda. Uh, Pam Dauda, uh, over to you. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, and you're unmuted. Okay, great. Um, could you introduce yourself and then tell us, uh, is it a success story, a lesson learned, or challenge that you have to share about uh, zero-dose children in urban settings? Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Pam Dauda. I work in Bauchi State. It's also a challenge I want to share, and I want to see how we can move around to be able to take care of those challenges. One of the major things we find out around here, one of the challenges we see, is that in urban settlements, these are environments or Sorry, areas... Sorry, I'm going to ask people. you to take a step back because that is you're about to share something very general with us. We're interested in a specific situation and what you did in response to it, as opposed to what you you know to, the sort of what you took away after having been through the experience. Sorry to cut you off, but that is important in terms of sharing experience in the most useful, productive way. Okay, what I was just trying to say is that I've had an experience in one of the settlements that is urban, and we know that urban settlements are settlements where you have people who are learned. But you will see that a, a settlement which is just close to the facility, you still find zero dose children. So we, I begin to wonder what is the reason? What are we? What has happened? That educated that is one, and also residing close to a facility in a in a, in a settlement that is not hard to reach, no nomadic, but still find urban distance. I had a situation like that, but we were able to interact because we found out that the fact that they are there, they know. They are just naturally not interested. So they need to be talked more. So we had a team, went out and talked to them and discussed with them why is it that the facility is even close to you, the father is educated to an extent, but still their children are not immunized. Sometimes we come to find out that maybe our health workers feel 
that's my finding actually then how health workers felt like ah these people are close to us they come here they take their uh they we see them every day we talk to them so there's no problem but on research on finding i will find out that they are not immunized there are zero dose but what we did in that particular settlement was that we went back talked to the people around there and also talked to the health workers to keep an eye on the closer people who are there in the urban centers who you think that they know and they are already uh, enlightened to be able to do we did that and we were able to immunize few of the children that were zero dose around our community. Thank you and over. Thank you very much indeed, Pam uh, Dauda. A concise and to the point uh, story. Again, we're really asking about the specific situation and then you can tell us what you learned. That's actually the last uh, question there. Now, uh, Kalu Joy has a hand raised, so let's go to Kalu Joy. And I believe we uh, we do have in mind the uh, our rules of equity uh, between countries and genders uh, to make sure that if uh, that there are people from many different countries uh, that speak Kalu Joy, uh, please introduce yourself and then tell us about the specific situation uh, involving zero dose children in urban setting and what you did in response to it. Okay, thank you, Reda. My name is Kalu Joy Mbal. I'm a lecturer, also a researcher. So I work with a team of researchers who are my students, actually. So for the, let me go straight to the point because of time. So I had this experience with a schoolmate who just put to bed. So I find out that when I went to do some a visitation to check on the newborn, so I find out that she hasn't immunized the child for the first time and the older children that she has too. So when I tried to inquire what happened, she told me that the hospital where she does her, where she usually put to bed, okay, that they charge very high for immunizations and that makes her not to, <clears throat> that she's not interested on the immunization, considering the situation of things in Nigeria, that's my country, okay? So I had to introduce her to a primary health care facility and that was at the, I told her when it's, Six, when the child is six weeks, that she should inform me so we can go to a primary health um, a primary health care facility, and that she did. So we went there. The child was immunized at a no or low cost. Okay, so she was able to bring other children of hers who haven't had immunization from birth. So that was actually a success story for me that I was able to <clears throat> identify a, um, some zero dose children and they were immunized. Okay, then one when that the experience I, I, I learned from that was I had to go back to my team of students who I usually work with. Okay, so we do usually have this um, community sensitization that we do. We do have to have sometimes, or uh, we do a, a kind of a community based. Okay, so we have to go to house to house to let them know that in case you put to bed in a private. Um, facility that's a hospital that you can come to primary health care where there is vaccine and that the government gives this vaccine and there are donors equally that equally bring this vaccine so that your children can be vaccine, vaccinated against any form of illness and since then there has been a great um, output so to say because if the, the some of the facilities that we visited as primary health care they have been telling us that people have been coming and you find out that children that were not immunized at their proper time or maybe at birth or their six weeks they have such cases and they've been able to immunize those children so that's a, a really um success story to me uh as well and again for the hpv i don't know if i'm i'm allowed to Say something on the HPV. <laughs> we, we, Am I? It's probably close to your heart. So if you can make a concise comment about it, yes, please do. We yes, 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 yes. Because actually, I think in last two years, I I voiced out I voiced out that HPV vaccine wasn't in South East, and now by October this year, now they are running out the vaccine. So it, it's equally a huge success story to me, and I really want to say a big thank you to this platform on which my voice was heard. Thank you very much, Reda, and. Thank Thank you, colleagues. Thank you very much indeed. Now over to Vishesh Kumar from India, who says he has a success story. So we're looking forward to that. And then we'll go back to the guides on the side. I'm going to ask uh, uh, Deepa Pokharel, who leads the uh, demand team at UNICEF, to take on the most difficult, the most challenging task for a guide on the side, which is to help us gain some perspective, many different stories, 
all of them not quite complete. So we'll go, go be going to Deepa, but let's first listen to Vishesh uh, Kumar's uh, success story on reaching zero dose children in urban settings. Don't forget thank to you, thank you, Dr. Reda. Thank you very much, and good evening, colleagues. Uh, I'm from India. I'm Dr. Vishesh Kumar. I'm working with World Health Organization, Country Office India. As you know, that uh, India was having the largest number of zero dose in the world due to COVID pandemic, and I'm working in an urban setting where population is around 11.2 million. And uh, what we did. Uh, that uh, we were focusing on the zero children in the entire country, but you can see that the urban setting which I am working was having a population of 11.2 million. And we introduced a system of uh, electronic uh, registration of all the due children up to five years of the age. And the urban setting, they planned only for only 0.8 million children they have registered. Then we monitored those children and we went to the authorities and deployed the nursing students and more than 1,000 nursing students were deployed in that city. They went house to house and they registered all zero to five year children electronically and then they were followed up and vaccinated. And we reached around a coverage of around, we, we reached uh, around 7.6 million uh, population we reached and we covered almost around 85% of zero dosers in that city. So that, uh, I mean that proper headcount survey of zero to five years children going house to house and enumerating those children and mobilizing those children to those session sites and we, we place session sites near to the community and it has increased our coverage. Thank you, Reda. Thank you. And over uh, from my side. Thank you very much indeed, Vishesh Kumar and all the other uh, Teach to Reach uh, guests of honor today who shared their experiences ahead of this session and who are sharing uh, live now. I'd like to go now to Deepa uh, from UNICEF and Deepa asking you uh, to help us unravel all the many different things that we've heard. Uh, we've heard some great advice and guidance from Charles and uh, Ibrahim. Uh, what's on your mind? What do you think is most important to highlight and to emphasize at this point for these zero-dose practitioners? Uh, in the room. Thank you, Radha, and thank you, colleagues, for really sharing things which are happening on the ground. It's really uh, so much of insight and really appreciate everybody who shared. So just reflecting on a few things which has come out from the stories across different countries, but also looking at what would probably help um, colleagues to think about is we know that urban immunization is very complex. It's not as simple as a rural area where everybody literally knows everyone, so it's easier to track these children. So I think the starting point is how do we really identify where the zero dose children are? Because we heard from colleagues that, you know, there are these are IDPs, these are new people who've come to the uh, urban areas. And if you look at across the board, usually the urban poor settlements are always hard to get. So let's start off thinking we just heard from India about how they are using electronic register to just go house to house and then enter it into the system. But not all countries would have the electronic register system started. So let's look at what is available in terms of structures, the primary health care uh, structures. Um, somebody mentioned that, you know, the cost of timing and not knowing that, you know, it can be available free of cost in the primary health care is a really interesting one because a lot of time people may not know about it, you know. So first to identify where these zero dose children are, let's use the mechanism, whether it's a community health volunteer or it could be an NGO, which is supporting the Ministry of Health, the CBOs, which, which are available. We can also mobilize a child to child approach to ask them, please find out how many children are there in your own area. So I think that's a start to identify identify where the people are and then based on that whether it's a we enter into the system and then have the um, community health volunteers and the mobilizers follow send them reminders uh, if it's a second dose that we're looking at i really like the idea of uh, working with the nursing students but many times you would want you would understand that in the urban areas the 
pediatrician and the nurses play a big role because they are very trusted source of communication. So often we miss out that we do need to work with this association of pediatric um, uh, doctors and nursing association who would then be able to communicate well with the people who come there to make sure that you know they get, the children are vaccinated and they are taken um, at the right time to be vaccinated. Yeah. And the last thing I wanted to say, Rada, is taking the services closer to the communities. I think we just heard from India and other colleagues also. How do you make sure that we are taking the services closer to the people rather than actually the other way around where they have issues of cost and transport and all? Let me stop there. Thank you very much indeed, Deepa and fellow guides on the side from UNICEF for this special session on reaching zero dose children in urban settings. We're asking you to share. It can be a success story. It can be a lesson learned. It can be a challenge, but it needs to be something specific that you actually happened to you that you were involved with and we're interested in what you did in response to it. How did it turn out? What did you learn? Those are the questions we're asking for those of you who are on the main conference platform. Uh, here we have some a few contributions uh, uh, Joy Ojukbeli, who says, My challenge till now is that the LGA, has, uh, the local health authority, has not been able to get money to meet all the hard to reach areas from the local government. But my achievement, unfortunately, Joy, if I could ask you to. Okay, my achievement was that during the OBR1 campaign, we were able to visit all the wards and vaccinated 16 zero dose children across both LGAs. Concrete examples of what it takes to actually lead change in such a context. Uh, we have many, many other comments. Uh, I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to them all because we want to keep listening to your stories and uh, experiences and turn to our, our guides on the side. So I'm now going to go to, let's see, um, we have heard uh, from, let's go to Auta Samelia and Najib Ibrahim, um, who have hands raised. So please, uh, Najib Ibrahim, I'm going to ask you to unmute as well as uh, Auta. Yes. All right. Um, all right. Let's start with Alta Samelia. Um, can you tell us uh, where you're from, where you work, what you do, and then uh, tell us about the specific situation in which uh, you tried uh, and maybe did reach uh, zero dose children in an urban setting? Alta Samelia. Yeah. Good afternoon to you all. All right. Can you introduce yourself, please? Good afternoon to you all. My name is Alta Samelia. Calling from Kaduna uh, State Jamal local government. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. So tell us what was the uh, specific All situation right. uh, that involved zero dose children uh, in an urban setting? Yeah, the uh, success story so far, the method I adopt to make sure that all the children from zero dose being immunized. From our instance, the parents were not uh, allowing their children to be immunized. What I did first and foremost is to organize a town hall focal group discussion with the parents and also to tell them the importance of uh, vaccination on their children. Also engage with the... Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Please proceed. It, uh, occasionally, Hello? we have some people who accidentally unmute their microphones. That's what happened. Please pr go ahead. Okay. So, after I've been organizing the focal group discussion, telling them the importance of the vaccine to their children, and I also engage on the security aspect, I engage the security apparatus on the importance of um, securing the community to allow all the zero dose children coming to get their immunization. That was the first success story. And the physically challenge though, that cannot go because of the distance. I actually have a group discussion with them together with the vaccine officer. So what I did, I put them in a specific strategic places. Then I invite the vaccine officers and all of them, we are actually vaccinated. So that was the success story so far for now. Thank you very much indeed, Alta Samelia. Uh, let's go now to Najib Ibrahim. And Thank then I, I believe, um, let me see. Uh, do let me know. Yes, Sabo Maimuna. Um, you'll be next after Najib. Um, 
as uh, you you couldn't find the icon to raise your hand i'm glad you put a message in the chat so i've actually done that for you uh, najib over to you uh, introduce yourself and then tell us about a specific um, zero dose urban setting situation what you did in response to it well uh, uh, good afternoon all I'm, I'm Najib S. Ibrahim. I'm community health practitioner. I'm working with one uh, of the facility here in Kano State of Nigeria. So as I started uh, mentioning in our last session, that was last Friday. Well, uh, for the what I we were observed for the uh, zero dose reduce in our immunization data is we have observed that most of the delivered women out of the hundred percent only six to seven sixty to seventy percent are able to bring back their children to immunization hello yes we're listening please proceed well so uh as we observe that so we we are able to set and discuss with our uh, uh necessary uh, personnel so uh and we have adopted the uh strategies the strategies included uh we have in, we have started initiation of tracking of of the newborn babies right from the maternity to ensure all the newborn baby have immunized and then secondly we ensure we ensure that all newborn babies are immunized before being discharged to home and then we encourage mobilization on importance of immunization especially during antenatal care for the pregnant mothers and we, we develop or initiate an awareness community and awareness uh, we liaise with the community leaders and all necessary uh, concern for the awareness about the importance of immunizations. So apart from me, this is my little contribution there. Thank you very much indeed. Now let's turn back to our guides on the side. So let's start with, uh, let's go back to Ibrahim Dadari. And I want to thank all of the Nigerian uh, scholars who, who've who contributed. Uh, Nigeria is our largest uh, community of alumni. Nigeria is one of the four countries where we have uh, appointed ambassadors for Nigeria. So we appreciate the Nigerian presence. We also want to encourage other countries uh, to, uh, to contribute to this discussion. But Ibrahim Dadari, can you help us uh, unravel and make sense of what the different experiences shared are telling us um, what would be your uh, feedback uh, guidance uh, suggestions maybe even recommendations to different uh, cases situations uh, that have been shared thank you Rita thank you colleagues I think this is quite exciting um, what is being shared uh, from Nigeria to India to Kenya to Uganda I've seen in the chat it's, it's really exciting and it's showing that uh, colleagues are making a lot of efforts to be able to reach the zero dose children with vaccines in all the settings, um, uh, which is commendable. And they've shared quite a lot of different perspectives as well. Uh, but I think uh, the key thing, uh, what we can make out of this is that one, um, we need to have a holistic plan, um, uh, a deliberate strategy. As India mentioned, I know they have the National Urban Health Mission which was built around the National Rural Health Mission to target children in urban settings, particularly those in urban uh, peri-urban slums. But also we noted that uh, we have zero dose children sitting close to the health facilities. Um, those educated um, big houses that, uh, that, that understands the value of uh, immunization as we assume. Um, so that is telling you that we have hard to reach close to the facilities. So when health workers are planning to to, to communicate or to deliver services, they need to be conversant and understand that we shouldn't leave those close to the facility. Don't assume that their children are vaccinated. In fact, I was in Malawi last two weeks, and we're talking about, um, we uh, the, the stakeholders were saying probably a lot of them have zero dose children in their houses, which they neglect because they assume that things will happen automatically. Never assume. Uh, but when now looking at mapping the zero dose children, we know that the urban settings, as described here, is a heterogeneous population. 
So communication has to be broken into for those that are educated in the cities, well uh, affluent, the type of communication has to be contextualized. For those coming from rural or migrating, staying in the urban or peri-urban slums, or even those in informal settings, you have to also tailor the communication to their understanding as much as possible. One thing that came out is also the use of technology. Uh, somebody talked about the use of WhatsApp uh, uh, and, and that. And, and that has been powerful in a lot of places. Particularly, we know that the penetration of uh, mobile technology and internet in urban settings is relatively higher than rural settings. So you could leverage on that opportunity um, to try as much as possible to share the message, to create caregiver and health worker groups to be able to disseminate information and try to dispel some of the wrong notions on vaccination that are, are being shared out there. Um, somebody also talked about community uh, volunteers, community, um, and that is fantastic. We know there's a lot of um, opportunities for volunteerism in the urban settings. Try to leverage them, to use them, to communicate. Um, where you have informal or uh, peri-urban settings with formal community leadership structures, um, I think we should use that. But one point before I forget, I think just to let our colleagues uh, know that, yes, uh, somebody was talking about um, hospital deliveries. Hospital deliveries is just a part of those that actually deliver. So when we are planning, we shouldn't forget that there's probably also an equal amount, particularly in Nigerian context, an equal amount that has not delivered at home. They didn't come to the facility. So when you're planning, don't just look at those that came to the facility, but also think of those that did not come to the facility and see how to try to reach them with vaccines. Over. Thank you, Rida. Thank you very much. Indeed, Ibrahim Hadari, a global lead for zero dose in urban settings at uh, UNICEF. So Unziku Tolbert uh, will be our next uh, speaker if Unziku is able to uh, unmute their microphone. Uh, we still have many, many uh, hands raised. Again, uh, we're interested in hearing from as many different countries, as many different situations as possible. Unziku Tolbert, a warm welcome to you. Uh, thank you, Reda. Uh, are you able to hear me loud and clear? Loud and clear indeed. Uh, tell us who you are, what you do, and then uh, please tell us, share your uh, zero-dose urban setting story. Yeah, thank you, Reda and, uh, and the team, and the team in the studio. My name is Unziku Tolbat. I'm from South Sudan. I think the first in the, uh, to speak from South Sudan. Um, I work for UNICEF as a health specialist uh, based in uh, one of the states, uh, that is Upper Nile State. Upper Nile State is bordering Sudan, uh, where there is a uh, conflict at its peak. Uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a global news, all of us know. Uh, so um, the town, uh, urban setting that I'm talking about here is uh, called Rank. Rank is a location where there are over, currently there are over 200,000 population that uh, arrive from Khartoum, Sudan, fleeing conflict. So uh, the case at point is that um, um, when these people came from Khartoum uh, to rank town, uh, because it's an urban setting with uh, uh, good service, social services, electricity, uh, good water supply, um, then suddenly we started uh, seeing outbreak of measles. We started seeing cases of measles in rank hospital. And um, all what uh, we, we did is to review the, the, the travel history and the, the data in the registers. We realized these are uh, people who had travel uh, history from Sudan. And uh, they were based in Khartoum. So we, we had to... Uh, immediately uh, convene our uh, convene meetings and um, uh, start planning um, reactive campaign and also to ensure that every child um, is reached and every household where at least uh, population arriving from Khartoum uh, uh, where they they reach where we are traced and also because they are also conducts so we first of all did a, a measles reactive campaign and also um, we, we did uh, at several other rounds of campaign, we integrated campaigns uh, where we are done. So um, after that, um, we changed the strategy because the campaign mode is very expensive. Uh, we, we now are at the entry point where 
uh, people go where they pass from, where the entry point is at the border. We instituted um, a vaccination site. Um, every child that enters and uh, in the country uh, now has to, whether a refugee or returnee, has to be vaccinated so that the, the cost is a little bit lowered. Uh, we do not need to go to the others. And also, uh, we made a, a discovery that and uh, other than these uh, people who are returning, within the township, there are other people who are, people who are resident, uh, but uh, not vaccinated at all. And they do not have vaccination card, they are, they are not vaccinated. So what we did, and when you, we asked them, uh, their parents, we, we did uh, through UNICEF, uh, we have what we call SBC, we did a survey and the survey uh, finding uh, found out that this, uh, most of these families that, were, that had these children unvaccinated um, related uh, their uh, disbelief in the, in the in power of the vaccines, but uh, we used the radio stations uh, and SMS, uh, bulk SMS uh, approach to reach out on short messaging and also to uh, to host uh, talk shows and many of those parents who initially did not allow even during the campaigns did not allow uh, their um, children to be vaccinated were able to accept and um, we also use the power of the authority the local authority also got involved for some of those because they, we mapped out uh, where the households where we did not succeed in uh, vaccinating the children. So administrators, uh, the township administration also got involved and this pushed further. Uh, further, the last line was now in the, um, for the returnees, uh, the, those who completely refused were not able to assess other supplies because we realized they needed the um, food distribution and they also need um, the uh, they need the nutrition supplies, BP uh, five and those ones for their children. So for a child to assess this, um, they have to be vaccinated. So uh, with this multifaceted approach, we are able we managed to reach uh, all the uh, children in Reng town and Reng urban setting, and uh, this has been uh, the success of. Um, of this intervention, I think we can share it one as one of the um, a success story. So uh, let allow me to stop here. Uh, if you have follow up questions for me, please go ahead. Thank, Thank you, you, Reda Saki. Thank you, uh, Unziku Tobert. Thank you very much indeed. All right, we have just less than five minutes uh, to uh, to uh, bring this session to a close. We hope it leaves you thirsting for more. We'll be asking you uh, for your feedback, for your learning, for your reflections after this uh, this uh, Teach to Reach 9. Um, we're now going to go back to our guides on the side. Um, perhaps uh, if Deepa... Um, could share her final uh, reflections, thoughts, recommendations, suggestions on these issues. We've had a very rapid you know, overview of many different situations. Again, we, we count on our guides on the side uh, to help us with the sense-making, with unraveling the complexity of the actual daily practice of what people in the field do to get the work of immunization done. Adipa, are you able to unmute to share with us uh, your thoughts and, and uh, what could you imagine as maybe a next step following a discussion like this? What would be the next set of questions to consider? Um, thank you, Reda, and thank you again for the last round of colleagues who shared their experience and success stories from many different contexts. I think... Um, I would still want to uh, go back to what I said before, that data is going to be so important to really understand where these children are. There, some of the things which just came out in the last round of, um, round of sharing was that when it's urban immunization, it's very complex and it's very hard to identify. But some of the strategies which prove to work is like taking the immunization site at the borders, the cross borders, and va vaccinating as many children as possible. So we might want to think about how do we coordinate and synchronize with the cross borders? Because just an example of Sudan and South Sudan, how there is an inflow of people, not just from 
within the country but across the borders so i think that's going to be really really important to consider as next step when we are planning our sias or campaigns but for the routine immunization i think just letting people know because these are going to be people who have just come there's a lot of mobility the idps the people may not really know where they are going so i i think that just mobilizing the resources that is already there within the primary health care whether it's community and volunteers or you work with uh you know the uh, cso's and one thing i i was thinking and reflecting on is in many countries rotary does quite a you know quite a lot of work in terms of uh, helping the ministry of health the health facilities the district health facilities to mobilize and find out where the people are there are many churches who support um like the latter day center to uh, do a wonderful work in supporting the measles campaign for example how do we tap into these existing resources moving forward and make sure that our, our lives are become a little bit uh, easier i think it's the, the accountability on the health system and the vaccinators and many many of our health workers like yourself who do such wonderful jobs in complex setting uh, which we really appreciate of course is there but how do you how can we add on to the work that you are already doing um in the country so i think data i would focus if i was to summarize that i would say let's look at local data and see who is being missed out and try to look at what are the organization and the systems which can really help us but also looking at this complex environment how do we take the services closer to the people whether it's through the outreach session or through the regular um, immunization where we want people to be motivated enough to come and get vaccinated talking to the mothers talking to uh, people who are hesitant whether it's hpv or measles i think it's very important to listen to communities and plan with them thanks so much wonderful thank you adipa pokorel Charles Kakeri and Ibrahim Dadari from UNICEF for our guys on the side today. Thank you so much to all of the leaders, health leaders who shared their experiences in this session.